Hello, welcome to this lesson on how to determine the definiteness of a matrix. And this happens to be one of the important topics in numerical analysis. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos. So in this video, we are going to try to make things very, very simple. So, you're going to go through how to determine the definiteness of a matrix. And after doing that, we will use what you've learned to check the definiteness of these three matrices here. Alright. So, let's go through how to determine if a matrix is this definite or that definite. Alright. That's what the definiteness of a matrix is all about. So let's consider E, which is a square matrix. Alright, so a square matrix is the dimension is n by n. So for instance, a 2 by 2 is a square matrix, a 3 by 3, but 3 by 4 is not. So you could see there is no square matrix. So always our E is a square matrix. Thus the dimension is n by n. So whenever we have that matrix, which is also symmetric, all right. So it being symmetric means the transpose of the matrix is equal to itself, or in simple sense, i e i g the same as e g i. So meaning e one two be the same as e two one, e three two be the same as e two three. So that's when we see a matrix is symmetric as well. So we let the determinants of the leading principal submatrices be di, where i is um, a natural number. So it takes 1, 2, 3, up to n, right? So know that the last number n is going to determine on the kind of square matrix we have. I hope you understand. So here, there is a very very important concept which is the leading principal submatrix. So we will explain it as we move along. So let's take some rules here. So we say our matrix A is said to be positive definite if all our Di's are positive greater than zero for all our I's. And if to say that our matrix is negative definite, then it means that our di is less than zero. That is negative for odd i's. And for even i's, our di is greater than zero. And the third condition says that A is said to be indefinite if the determinant of A, which is always equal to dn, is not equal to zero and neither A or B holds. So that's when we see the matrix A is indefinite. Then the last one, if the determinant of A, which is equal to dn, is equal to zero, then the our matrix will be semi-indefinite. No, it will be indefinite. All right. So here, mm, this keyword won't even help because mostly when it is that way, then we try to find out whether it is positive semi-definite or negative semi-definite. Alright, so that's an important concept here. So we have these four rules which are going to guide us as to how to know whether our matrix is this or that in terms of definiteness. So I mentioned an important concept earlier on which was the leading principal submatrices. So now we are going to find out what it is. So the leading principal submatrix of order k, this is very important, of an n by n matrix is obtained by deleting the last n minus k rows and columns of the matrix. Let's take a very critical look of the definition because we are going to apply that. So, the determinant of the leading principal submatrix is called the leading principal minor of A. 
So let's consider a three by three matrix here, as you can see here. So you realize that because it is three by three, our n is three. So from this three by three matrix, we can form leading principal sub matrices of order k, where since n is three, k will run from one to up to three, right? So in place of the k, let's do it i. No, we can use anything because we used i earlier on. So when you want to form, when our i is one or our k is one, we are going to have e one. And E1 means we are going to delete n minus k, the first n minus k rules and columns. So n is 3, k is 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So that means to find our first DDM principal sub matrix, we have to delete the first two rules. So as you can see here, in the first two columns. So that means that that's going to give us just E33. So that's the reason you have E33 here. And note that D1 is the determinant of distance for determinants, not absolute value, please. So you can either say determinant of or determinant. Right? So where D1 is the determinant of our um A1, I think we have to make it A1. So our first leading principal sub matrix, which is equal to the E33. Because when you find the determinant of a scalar, it's the scalar itself. Then to get our second, so you see in this case our k is 2. That's the second leading principal sub matrix. So we are going to delete 3 minus 2, which is 1. We are going to delete the first row and the first column. So this is going to be the first row and this is going to be the first column. That means with that one, we are going to be left with this 2 by 2 matrix here. And that's what you can see here. And D2 is just the determinant of our second leading principal sub matrix. So that means D2 is the um, principal minor of our E2. Then our A3 is going to be the same as our matrix A because that one is going to give us 3 minus 3, which is 0. So that means we are not going to make any um, deletion. We are not going to delete anything. All right. So <clears throat> E3 is going to be the determinant of E3, which is the same as the determinant of E. So I hope you understand this concept very well. Alright, so since you get it, then let's move on to the questions that we want to solve. So we have the first one, we have this matrix here, A. Right, so let's check and see whether our A is symmetric or not. So let's find the transpose of A. So we will try to make you know we try to make the column rules and the rules column so we are going to get one two zero two four five and zero five six so you could see that um our a here is equal to a transpose so that means our metric is our matrix is symmetric or one thing you can also use to find out is that you realize that here this is a one one this is a one two this is a one three this is a two one a31. Can you see that E12 is equal to E2, E21, and E31 is equal to E13? So the symmetric nature holds. So that means this our matrix A is symmetric. Then since this 3 by 3, our n is 3. So now we have to form our leading principal sub matrices. So the first one is going to be the 6 here. So you should understand how we formed. Our leading principal sub matrices from the example you saw above. The determinant of it, this will give us this, which is greater than zero. The second one is going to give us what we have here. The determinant of that is going to give us negative one, which is less than zero, because this is going to give you four times six, that's 24 minus 25, which gives you negative one. And E3 is the whole of our E. And when you find the determinant of this, you get negative 25, which is less than zero. So since now we have a leading principal minus, we go to the rules we learned earlier on and see which of them holds. So the first one says for it to be positive definite, they all have to be positive. That's not true. So that means it can be positive definite. The second one says that for it to be negative definite, those with odd eyes should be negative and those with even eyes should be positive. So let's try and see whether that's true. 
you realize that that's not true can you see that um let's come here so can you see this is or oh, it's supposed to be negative but it is positive so that means second one doesn't hold to and the third one says a is said to be indefinite if the determinant of a is not equal to zero and neither a or b holds so you can see that's the truth that means that the first matrix our matrix a is said to be indefinite all right so let's go to the second matrix so the second matrix is a two by two matrix and that is negative three four four negative six so let's see whether this is symmetric so you can try it and see you're going to get a symmetric matrix so a transpose is equal to a so this is symmetric so getting our a1 is going to be negative 6 you should understand in this case n is 2 and the determinant of that is going to give us negative 6 as we have here then our a2 is going to be the same as our matrix a and the determinant of our matrix a is going to be negative 3 times negative 6 which is um negative negative 18 so which is equal to 18 and minus 4 times 4 so this gives us 2 to realize that here d1 we have an all term here is negative d2 is even is positive so that means from the rule that we stated earlier on this matrix is negative definite then with our third question we have this matrix here so you can check a transpose equal to a so it's symmetric Alright, so you realize that when you find our first leading principal sub matrix A1, that's going to give us 8. What we have here. And the determinant of it is 8. And A2 is going to be the same as our matrix because here our n is 2. And when you find the determinant of this matrix, you're going to get the product of these two minus the product of these two, which will give us 16 minus 16, which is 0. So realize that. Let's come to the rule. It says the fourth one. If the determinant of a is zero, then it might be positive semi-definite or negative semi-definite. So we come here. So when you come here, you realize that the determinant of a is zero, and the determinant of e one is eight. Right, so because as a result of that, it becomes positive semi definite. So you realize that if the determinant of D2 was also positive, it would have been positive definite. But since there is a zero here, it makes it semi like half definite. You get it. So this matrix here becomes positive semi definite. So there's a concept to use to find out whether a matrix is positive definite and all the types of um, definiteness we have. So thank you very much and please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos. All the best.